Hello, my name is Rob Littlewood from a company called Sidor Technologies, and I'm going to talk to you briefly in this video about a new device called the KeckPad. And the KeckPad is a direct detection X-ray imaging device which enables measurements into the megahertz frame rate. So the device is called the KeckPad, and the word pad stands for pixel array detector. And what that means is basically that it's just a pixelated readout. Um, so we can create imaging from that. And typically these pixelated readouts are arranged in small submodules. So as you see in the picture on the left hand side of the screen or the little submodule that I'm holding here, these can be used as individual devices or typically they are tiled up and tessellated together to form larger arrays and give a larger active image area. So much like you see in the central image there, that device there is an array of 512 by 512 pixels. That's then packaged up into the housing, which physically looks something like this device here, which can then be set up on the uh, end station or in the experimental chamber that you're working in to then take data. I also mentioned that it's a direct detector. So in, uh, as opposed to an indirect detector, which is typically used in x-rays in the past, uh, where an indirect detector setup will have something like a scintillator, which then converts the incoming X-ray photons into visible light. And then maybe a visible light camera can read the visible light photons that are coming off the scintillator. There's a few kind of conversion steps that are happening there in indirect detection. And so what that does is it just uh, degrades your quantum efficiency. It degrades the point spread function. And it also means that the temporal response to the device might not be capable of getting into these megahertz kind of imaging regimes that we're talking about here. So in direct detection, the substrate that we have at the front of the device, like silicon or CAD telluride, directly converts the incoming X-rays into charge, which is then read out. So the configuration of the Keck pad itself has been specifically designed to enable these megahertz frame rates that we've already mentioned. The way in which it does that is on board in the head, it has eight individual capacitors per pixel, which essentially form individual exposures to the incoming photons, uh, which can be separated, but then uh, imaged very, very quickly in between each one of those exposures before we then have to read out the data and pull down the images to the PC. So this is what we call a burst rate imager where we're bursting those eight frames and then we're reading out. The interesting thing with our device though is that the way it's been configured means that each capacitor can be individually triggered. So that enables some different timing modes and some uh, capabilities for you to play around with settings uh, in, the, in the temporal regime. So one option here is shown on the screen where you just want to access the fastest rates possible you want to do all eight frames at up to about 10 megahertz. So you burst exposures one to eight as fast as possible, and then you read out the data. And that readout happens at around eight milliseconds. So we can then have a cyclic refresh rate where we move on to the next burst of eight, eight frames at around 100 hertz. The other application example though, is if you might want to use those eight frames, but actually spread out the uh, timing of those frames, um, maybe to elongate the image acquisition time that you have, the total measurement time. So something like catalysis, where you have very, very fast things happening at the start of a reaction, you could maybe burst the first two or three frames very, very quickly. And then the interframe time between the next exposures could kind of decay uh, in a logarithmic fashion uh, until the eighth exposure before you then have to read out again. Finally, the other configuration that you can use is you can just set this device up as to continuously stream data out. So using just one frame or one exposure, we could then uh, read out exactly after that exposure and we can set this up to just continually frame and take measurements as you might do in simple kind of non-time resolved diffraction experiments. And actually this can still be done at reasonably fast rates up to about a kilohertz. So you can see here with all these different timing modes, it gives you some great flexibility for the detector. It doesn't just have to be a very, very fast dedicated time resolved detector. 
It could also be used for your everyday standard experiments where you want to do continuous framing. So there's no need to buy extra devices to do these different things. So most recently with this device, we visited the APS and we got beam time uh, with the help of the HP CAT team. And you can see uh, some of our team there and some of the Cornell team there who were also involved in the development of this device originally, uh, helping us out setting up the experiments there. We did a number of different experiments with a number of different detector configurations. Um, a couple of uh, the ones that are listed here are that we used both silicon and cadmium telluride detectors. So silicon used for imaging X-ray energies up to about 20 keV, and then cad telluride for uh, imaging uh, photons above the 20 keV threshold. We took data by uh, hitting photons onto a number of different samples. A couple of them listed there are graphite and cerium oxide. But one of the quick things that I wanted to highlight that we were able to do with this experiment really shows the, the capability of this device to be really flexible in the temporal domain. So in this configuration, the synchrotron was running in the 24 bunch mode which basically means that the time separation between each photon uh, pulse or X-ray bunch was about 150 nanoseconds. And what you see in the bottom right hand side of the screen there is a image of uh, diffraction rings from a graphite sample using about a 50 nanosecond exposure. If we were to acquire that image and we were to draw a region of interest around the intensity that's shown in the uh, diffraction ring, you can actually pull out just a single data point, so just a single intensity. And that's what's shown on the plot on the left-hand side, where we show what we did with the timing of the device. And we set the device up to essentially change the timing delays of each capacitor or each frame relative to the synchrotron bunches, such that the frame exposures were kind of marching through the timing of the synchrotron bunch or the arrival of the photons into the experimental station. So you can see the plot there shows how we can actually lock into the timing of one single uh, X-ray bunch and synchronize exactly and give really, really uh, amazing temporally resolved experiments locked into the timing of the ring. So just a summary of some of the capabilities that this, this detector enables, it has a well depth of about 8,000 photons at 8 keV, so it's still got a very good full well capacity. That can change with the gain settings you use, so you can tweak the gain settings to do different um, exposure, uh, sorry, you can tweak the gain settings to allow um, different full well capacities. The read noise is about half a photon, um, so we're still very, very sensitive to those very low levels of light that you're going to get at these megahertz rates. It enables a burst mode at up to 10 megahertz framing rates, and we can synchronize those frames to individual X-ray pulses in the ring. The other thing with this device is that it's not purely a burst mode detector. It enables detection uh, of other experiments, maybe continually framing at one kilohertz, or because we can individually trigger each capacitor, we can change those into frame delays uh, within those bursts of eight frames, giving things like logarithmic decays. The array that you see there is about 80 millimeters squared in a 512 by 512 array, and both silicon and cad telluride uh, versions of these devices are now available to be ordered. So uh, the Keck pad itself, is a direct detection imager for hard X-rays, enabling megahertz framing rates. It has amazing flexibility in its timing setups, and it can also be configured for continuous framing or uh, interesting timing setups as and when you may need them. So if you do need more information, you can email us directly at info at or you can visit the website for more information.